Salute family, it's our first class Bennett here, and this is your Army Now. Make sure you follow us on our platforms here, and let's get started, all right? So this week was all about officers, all right? I am an NCO, non-commissioned officer, but this week we're going to give the officers some love. It's all about officers this week, so let's talk about it, all right? But we know we can't do anything until I hear my theme music, so cue the music, and we'll be right back. Coming to you live from the NorCal studios in Sacramento, California, this is Your Army Now. And this is Your Army Now. I'm Sergeant First Class Bennett, and I am honored and pleased to have our special guest here. We have Senior Airman Adam Fisher. Thank you for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So. I see your uniform here. You got an airman in the mist in the Army studio. Yes, sir. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, first off, uh, I'm in the United States Air Force. I've been there for about six years. I am a C 5M Super Galaxy crew chief. Uh, since then, I've transitioned over to the 921st CR, which is Contingency Response Squadron. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so uh, you're here today because you are uh, going to the OCS program. Right, the the, the uh, <clears throat> officer candidate school program. Yes, sir. Okay. So, tell us what what made you decide to switch over from Air Force to the Army. Uh, just being uh, on a lot of training exercises with the Army, with the squadron I'm a part of, and contingency response, we work hand in hand with many Army uh, units, such as the Airborne and so forth. So, being down there, seeing their missions, seeing mm -hmm. what they do, right, uh, and with me leaving the squadron that I'm a part of. Uh, I really enjoyed the mission, so I felt like it was a good transition for me to switch over and uh, pursue the officer candidate program with the Army. Okay, so it, you couldn't do that in the Air Force? That, like, uh, what made you not just switch jobs in the Air Force and possibly have that opportunity to do what you're doing now through the Air Force? Uh, so there's several reasons for that. Uh, just for It's a little bit quicker process or more streamlined with the goals and the personality which I have. Right. It's not, the Air Force has treated me very well, to right. say the least, okay. but uh, I wanted to deploy more. I want to get down range a little bit more. Me being a C-5 crew chief, uh, mm -hmm. I only have two bases, which is Dover, Delaware, right. and Travis Air Force Base. Right. So I'm very limited. So you were limited, okay. Yes, sir. And on top of that, I've also wanted to commission, and the Army has also made that a little more accessible uh, with the process as well than right. the Air Force due to the, all the different regulations and such. Right. So basically you're saying that the Army kind of fit more your personality. Nothing wrong with the Air Force, but the Army just, what your goals and aspirations were, the Army was more streamlined to get to your goals quicker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So do you have any advice for any of the young soldiers or young, not soldiers, but the young uh, youth <clears throat> out there who's possibly thinking about joining the Army? What kind of advice do you have for them out there? First off, I'd say it's a, it's a great opportunity. Uh, you really will get around the world. You get mm -hmm. to see things, be a part of things you never never would have thought of or imagined just staying here in the States and doing whatever it is you do. Right. Uh, you'll get a great training and you'll have a good time. You'll meet some great friends that you'll take with you the rest of your life. Even if you're in for just four years, one enlistment, or if you're in for 20, you'll, you'll be friends with them forever. I promise you that. Okay, I appreciate that. So, so one last thing before we let you go. Uh, you sitting around you're like, I'm in the Air Force, I'm gonna join the Army. Uh, I'm gonna go <clears throat> to a recruiting station, right? Yeah. So, Tell us about that experience. What, what, what recruiting station? Who's your recruiter? The, you know, give them a shout out. Uh, so pretty much, uh, I was looking around. So I ended up going over to the Vacaville Recruiting Center and ran to the Sergeant First Class Bowling, and uh, he's been taking care of me ever since. And that's where the process started. Once I sat down with him, and we got things going. Yeah. All right. So again, we have Senior Airman Adam Fisher about to become an officer for the Army. Appreciate you coming by. Yes, sir. Thank you for having. They come from big cities and towns so small you can't find them on a map. They hail from all walks of life, all races, all creeds. They're the kid who sat next to you in high school, the girl you dated in college, your neighbor across the street. They are mentors, managers, and decision makers. Men and women who have gained the strength to lead, 
and the strength to motivate and inspire others. They're people who have attained the strength to succeed in life, whether in the military or in the civilian world. They are the officer corps of the United States Army. There are four ways to become an officer in today's Army. Use the tool that follows this video to find the path that's right for you. And we're back. Sergeant First Class Bennett, I'm still here. You're still here. Thank you for sticking around with us. This is your Army now, as you can see. And please follow us on our platforms up here. Again, this is our YouTube version of your Army now. It's a little bit longer, so I'm glad you're here. We got information for you. Today's episode is all about the officers, as you can see. All right. So uh, we just talked to an Air Force Airman who is now going through the OCS process. All right. OCS. What does that stand for? As you know, it stands for Officer Candidate School. So he's an airman now coming into the Army because the Army is cool, and he wants to become an officer through the Army. All right. So. This next segment, we're going to talk about what we all love to hear about, the money. All right, so I got Lieutenant Warrington. He's going to help us explain how the money works, all right? And this should appeal to you college students, all right? Lieutenant Warrington's going to get into it, he, he, and he's going to use his own experience to help paint the picture of how the money works in the officer candidate area, all right, in the Army. All right, so let's... Stop talking. Let Lieutenant Warrington do the rest of the talking. This is your Army Now. We'll be right back. Welcome in, everyone. I'm First Lieutenant Alex Warrington. This is your Army Now. This week, we've got something special for y'all. We're going to be talking about how to become an officer, the ways you become an officer, and what's special about being an officer. So today, what I'm specifically going to be going over is uh, what a civilian graduate looks like right out of college looking for employment compared to what a brand new officer is uh, making and what they got ahead of for them. So looking at our civilian grads here, a recent study from February 2019 showed that fresh out of college grad is looking for 60K a year. Now what we're finding is that they're actually earning 50K a year and it's gonna stay right around there for their first four years of experience. On top of that, from your student loans, if you're averaging 10,000 uh, per year from your student loans, you're going to be paying about $300 a month just to repay your student loans. As well as that, you have limited leadership opportunities in the civilian sector, limited growth, and limited planning experience. What I'm talking about there is when you come to that entry level position on the civilian market, you're going to have to fight for those positions. You're constantly having to put yourself out there to find those leadership opportunities, that growth, and that planning experience. A brand new officer uh, is making what they got ahead for them. So you're smart. You're here looking to become an officer. You've already gone online and checked out how much a brand new officer makes. 38K. Now some of you are probably saying, Alex, how is that competitive? How is 38K competitive to a civilian grad making 50K? Well, the Army doesn't do itself justice in showing you the full picture. As a brand new officer, and actually as your whole time as an officer, you're also receiving what is called BAH, Basic Allowance for Housing. Now, that changes in amount depending on where you're stationed. If you're in Georgia, it could be as low as $1,200 a month. If you're in Washington, D.C., Hawaii, New York City, it could be over three grand a month. But for my situation, and just to average it out, I'm going to say it's two grand a month. So in a year, that's an additional 24 grand you're making a year. Put it all together. And a brand new officer is making 62 grand a year. So not only as a brand new officer are you beating what the civilian grad is making out there in the market, but you're making what everybody's looking for. Now, we're not done. 
So the Army's all about growth. So after two years of being an officer, you become a first lieutenant, like me. At that point, your pay jumps up to 74 grand a year. Now let's add on another year. As a first lieutenant, you're making 82 grand a year. Now you hit your four year mark. You become a captain. You're now making 92 grand a year. Now again, this is including your BAH. But let's take a look at this again. After four years of being an uh, officer in the United States Army, you're making 92 grand a year. Compared to a civilian grad who's looking for 60K, is only earning 50K, and he's going to be staying stagnant at 50K for those first four years, building that experience. Looks pretty nice to be an officer. Now let's talk about student loans. Again, civilian side of the house. You might have a $300 a month payment for student loans. On the Army side, if you are on the Army side, if you're looking to do ROTC, you can get a scholarship. That's what I did. I came out of college with zero student debt. If you're already a college grad and you're looking to do OCS for active duty, the Army will repay up to 65 grand in student loan repayment. 65 grand. So you can come, join the Army as an officer, starting out making 62K a year, working up to 92K after four years. Oh, and you don't have student loan debt. Now, let's talk about experience. So going back to fresh out of college civilian grad here, you have limited leadership opportunities, limited growth, and limited planning experience. You have to fight for those, right? As an infantry officer, my first job out the gate was a platoon leader. That gave me a lot of experience you're not going to see fresh out the gate on the civilian sector. One of those being that my first job was being responsible for 40 personnel in a infantry striker platoon. You don't see that in the civilian side. To put it in perspective on the civilian side, that'd be like your first job being a manager personally responsible for 40 people in that office. On top of being the platoon leader for that striker platoon, I was also responsible for $15 million worth of property. I do account for it, and I was ultimately responsible for it. Again, something you're not going to see or have the opportunity to do on the civilian side of the house. And lastly, I was responsible for planning everything that 40 personnel platoon with that $15 million worth of property did. So whether that was going to the range, moving from point A to point B, or planning training, I got that experience in planning that. Again, something that you're going to have to fight for on the civilian side of the house. So overall, looking at our comparisons here, A fresh civilian grad looking for 60K, only earning 40K for those first five, correction, four years. You're going to have to deal with student loan payment, and you're fighting for those limited leadership opportunities, the growth, and the planning experience. Officer side of the house, working our way up from 62K a year to 92K a year. 
we're getting our student loans either paid off or we're coming out of college with no student loans and we're getting experience right out the gate leading people being accountable for property you're not going to see on the civilian side of the house and planning again something you're going to have to fight for on the civilian side so thanks for listening in again I'm First Lieutenant Alex Warrington. This was your Army Now. They lead across frozen rivers. They lead from island to island. They lead to higher ground, to build hope, to break through barriers to free a continent, to explore new worlds and carry on the ideals of a nation. Officers in the U.S. Army are leaders who can rise to any challenge. They have learned to bring out the best in others and themselves. Can you? Find out more about Army officership at goarmy.com slash officer. All right, we're back. Still your army now. All right. So thank you, Lieutenant Warrington, for that little whiteboard segment. I like it. I like it. You know, you're used to seeing Sergeant Major do the whiteboard, but this time we wanted to mix it up a little bit, show you some new faces, and for you to see it from the perspective of the officer. So I, I think it would, it would have been a disservice if one of us did it. So we wanted an officer to actually show you what he went through. So I hope you like that segment. All right. The money is always good. All right. So now we're going to talk about the different ways you can become an officer. All right. OCS is one of the ways. Right. So these are those are for the college graduates. Right. If you are a civilian who is coming into the Army and you want to become an officer and you have a college degree, put your packet in and become an officer that way. But then there are two other ways you could become an officer, all right? For some of us who are already in the Army, let's say I wanted to become an officer, I would put a packet in called green to gold, right? Meaning you go from enlisted to officer, all right? And it's a whole process. We'll probably do that at another show, but you can Google it or you can go on goarmy.com and find out what the green to gold area is all about. All right, and the other way is if you are a high school student who's about to go into college and you want to become an officer, you can go to ROTC. ROTC scholarship, it's, they, have, they have different versions. You have a four-year version of it, three years, and a two-year version of the ROTC scholarship program. All right, so these are the three different ways that you can um, become an officer. All right, so... We don't want to make this segment too long, but these are things that you can research and find out more about. You can go on goarmy.com, military.com, Google, or you can look in the description. We'll, we'll, we'll help you out a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to just stick some, some information down in the description bar down there, and we'll give you some information, some links that you can click to so you can find out how to become an officer. All right? So that's all we have for you this week. This is Sergeant First Class Bennett. You know how we do. I want you to all be good to each other. Do not drive and text. Be blessed and manifest. This is your army now. Follow us on our platforms. Southwest has been signing out. Peace and blessings, family.